Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about verbal instruction. Um, so verbal instruction, of course, is a very common strategy along with demonstration. Um, so it's how we describe and help to uh, teach learners how to perform a skill. Uh, but there's several different factors that we need to consider when we are developing effective verbal instruction. Uh, so the first important thing to consider is attention. Uh, we all have a limited attention capacity. And so when a person is learning a brand new skill, so they're a beginner at that skill, uh, can be overwhelming and there could be a lot to pay attention to and they can only really receive um, one or two instructions at a time as they're learning that new skill. Um, so it's important to be aware of how much verbal instruction you're trying to deliver at a time and keep it as brief as possible and just give instructions more frequently rather than trying to give a lot of instruction all at once because uh, the learner is not going to be able to pay attention to all of those different things in their early attempts at learning that skill. Um, when you're giving instructions, you want to help the person uh, learn how to focus their attention on the right things. Uh, so because they won't be able to pay attention to everything all at once when they're first learning, they need to know what to be paying attention to. So like we've talked about in past videos, um, they're going to be better off focusing their attention on the movement outcomes. So the external focus, the goal of the movement, uh, rather than the movement itself, which would be an internal focus. Okay, so they may have to be aware of like, don't drop the elbow, you know, that kind of thing. So you will have to give some of that to help point them in the right direction to complete the skill correctly. But in general, if you can help them focus on and pay attention um, to things external to what their body is actually doing, you know, pay attention to the goal of the movement, then they're going to be more effective at learning that skill. Uh, it's also helpful to use verbal metaphors and analogies that help the learner connect the new skill to something that they already know and understand. Uh, so it's like if you're teaching someone how to skip, you could compare it to a bouncy walk. Or like I have little kids and we're always working on brushing teeth better. And so I use the metaphor of scrubbing the dishes because I don't want them just going through the motions. I want them to actually clean their teeth. And so I equate that to actually scrubbing dishes, which they can connect to and they understand. And when I use that cue and I remind them of that, then they actually brush their teeth to clean their teeth, not just, you know, move the brush around in their mouth. Um, give instructions about environmental context conditions to pay attention to. So you can be giving them information about things that they should be looking for um, in their environment while they're completing that task. So like, for example, in all sorts of martial arts or fighting of, of different kinds, you can watch the center of mass. And when the center of mass shifts, then that gives you a cue about what they're about to do because where they're looking or what their arms or legs are doing doesn't necessarily tell you. They can lie with those things, but they can't lie with their center of mass. So that's an instruction that you can give to help them pay attention to the right thing. Now, it, it's helpful to give that kind of verbal instruction if it's a cue that, if they're looking for a cue in their environment, um, that's going to happen a lot, but it actually works against the learner if you're giving them information like that about something that happens infrequently. So if you're saying, keep an eye out for this, and it's a thing that ha only happens rarely, then they might be paying a lot of attention looking for that particular thing that's only going to happen once in a while. And meanwhile, they're missing all the other things that they should be attending to instead of that particular thing. So just be wary, be careful about what you tell the beginner to look for um, and make sure it's something that's going to happen frequently enough that it's worth using their attention for when they do have a limited capacity. Um, for learning speed accuracy skills. Um, so again, that's a skill where both speed and accuracy are important for the correct execution of that skill. So with verbal instruction, if you emphasize speed early in learning that skill, then their speed will get faster, but it's at the expense of accuracy. Um, whereas if you emphasize accuracy in the learning of that skill, then they will become more accurate and then speed will catch up. So as they are 
uh, learning the skill and they're doing it accurately, they will be able to do it faster and faster with practice. Um, so the best strategy for verbal instruction when teaching a speed accuracy skill is to emphasize and prioritize accuracy because the speed will follow. If you emphasize speed, accuracy does not follow speed unless you really focus on improving the accuracy. Okay, so speed follows accuracy. Accuracy doesn't really follow speed. So that's the best strategy for verbal instruction there. Uh, verbal cues. So sometimes verbal instruction, um, if we're just providing lengthy verbal instruction, sometimes it provides too much information, not enough information. Uh, it can be hard to calibrate that. So that's where verbal cues come in uh, to help us manage that. So those are short, concise phrases uh, that we can establish in a practice environment. So then even in a competition environment or some other environment, we can throw out just a single word or a short phrase to help guide that athlete or that learner. Um, and it'll connect to what you've been doing in that practice environment. Um, so they're just short words or phrases that direct the performer's attention to something specific, either in the environment um, or in the way that they're moving. So it could be like um, elbow up or bend the knee or um, watch the center or whatever it is. I don't know. It depends on the sport or what the movement is, but it can just be a very short phrase. Um, and then that can also be used along with demonstration in the practice learning environment, because you could be demonstrating and pointing out as you're demonstrating what you're doing. Like, look at my elbow, look at my knee, look at you know, I'm paying attention to this thing or I'm paying attention to that thing. So then you can use those similar cues like you're using to describe while you're demonstrating. Uh, you can use those cues when the person is executing the action and help them direct their attention to the right things. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.